from microwave ovens to smartphones, we are surrounded by devices capable of indicating the precise time down to thousands of a second. Watches of today are not watches anymore, they are smart means to communicate, tools for productivity or guardians of health. However, despite losing any practical relevance, traditional wristwatches have not been fully relegated to being thought of as antiquated expressions of bygone eras, but have embraced the role of revealing personality and status, and perhaps there's no better expression of this purpose than the tonal watch. Counterintuitively, being introduced by Cartier in 1906, the tonneau predates the tank by a full decade, thus representing a transition from the traditional soft circular case to the severity of the rectangular legend. Modern iterations favor a bulkier waistline to the detriment of the slender oblong shape of the past, and Montmartre's approach plays within recent tendencies. We are therefore talking about a 35 by 42 mm case that wears like a 37 or even a 38 mm circular watch would. The way the case is finished puts an emphasis on the flanks of the watch with their mirror polished broad chamfered shoulders seamlessly transitioning to a beautiful satin brushing. I usually prefer the natural steel looks, but I have to admit I find the black DLC more appealing due to its more understated, yet just as luxurious looks. Another argument for the DLC coating is the superior resistance to wear and tear, evident when looking at these two prototypes that have spent quite some time on different wrists. Montmartre's signature Loomfield grooves, machined in the cardinal points of the case, just outside the flat sapphire crystal, give it a somewhat sporty vibe, more evident through the contrast offered by the black DLC coating. As two of its 11mm height are dedicated to the screw-down case back, the watch will have a discreet profile on the wrist, allowing for smoothly slipping it under the cuff. The lugs don't actually have too much of a downturn, and their relative stubby shape works wonders when it comes to the perfect strap integration. The signed push-pull crowns action is one of the best, with distinct audible pops between each of the three positions and perfectly balanced feedback when using it. The chrono pushers have great haptics and are easy to operate despite their lilliputan size. Both the MW3 and MW5 come in five different dial colors. Sage, Bleu, Cognac, Teal and Gunmetal Grey. It's becoming increasingly hard to come up with an original design. To have an original design as balanced and refined as this one is testament to the architecture background of Robert Morrison, its creator. The deep black of the central ring with its congruent minute markers, the sandwich construction of the outer section with the C3 field cutouts of the beautifully colored radially brushed slab of petal, the tasteful logo, the subtle yet effective date porthole at 6, they all combine to turn this into an original instant classic. This is to modern tonneau watches what extra de parfum is to eau de toilette, pure, unadulterated essence. However, essence stops being essence when tempered with, and this is why I believe the MW5 does not live up to the standards set by the three-hander. While the integration of the two chrono subdials is elegant, it creates too much of a distraction that's only accentuated by the Montmartre text, effectively creating a fourth hand that impacts legibility. Speaking of hands, their semi-skeletonized structure was already quite hard to distinguish from the 2, 4, 8 and 10 markers, making it quite hard to find a minute's hand. But with the chrono, I have to admit there were a couple of times when I simply gave up trying to find out what time it is. At night though, everything changes. 
The dark takes away any distraction and lets the liberally applied C3 Superluminova do its thing. As previously mentioned, on wrist the MW3 wears a couple of millimeter larger than its physical dimensions, so I guess 20 cm wrists are the largest that would pull off wearing it, as the 18 mm lug width keeps the watch accessible for those of us with more delicate wrists. When it comes to straps, there are three variants to choose from, Perlon, Steel Mesh and Solid Link Bracelets. I am intrigued by the bracelets, but there weren't any in the package I've received, so all I can tell you is that I'm positively impressed by the steel mesh. It does a great job of complementing the watch and the comfort is supreme, greatly aided by the ease of sizing it using the simple but efficient deployment clasp. The Perlon straps are a great option too when it comes to complementing the Parisian flair of the timepieces. I only comment on packaging worth commenting on, and the leather pouch the watch comes with is worthy of a pair of Dior sunglasses. This is not only one of the best packaging I've seen, but is definitely the most congruent to the watch it holds. So, is this a watch you should ignore, consider, shortlist or buy? Obvious answer, really, buy the three-hander. This is not just a modern tonneau, this is a brand new instant classic, and it's as well built as it deserves. This is a watch reviewer's eternal trope, but believe me, it photographs half as good as it looks in real life. Considering the 29% discount the watches are currently available at, it's really a no-brainer. However, I would only consider the MW5. To me, personally, the chronograph complication does not justify the compromise of poor legibility, but then again, do we really buy watches to tell us the time? If all you desire is to get a look out and just contemplate the details on the dial, then by all means shortlist it or buy it straightforward, it will be money well spent. After all, this is the beauty of this hobby, the never-ending choices only you get to make. A choice you could make is tuning in on the 13th for my review of Montmartre's Valentine to Watch Enthusiasts, the MW1. This one will be launched through Kickstarter and you can read more about it and about Montmartre in general in the interview I've taken of Robert Morrison on WatchOne.net. You can also watch this video preview. I'm looking forward to reading your thoughts, so please do comment and don't forget, I'm here to help you get the what you want.